Hey, welcome back to the Consulting Mind. Today, we are going to talk about the end of quantitative easing for, and in particular, we are going to highlight why the Fed is doing this, why they are doing this right now, and what might happen next. So, to begin with, the Fed has already ended the quantitative easing for on 9th of March 2022 and ceased to conduct new bond purchase. So be aware here that when we say the Fed has ended quantitative easing and ceased to buy new bond, it doesn't mean that they are going to pull back all the liquidity that has been injected into the market right away. So it simply means that they are going to stop buying new bond. And on the opposite, when we are saying that the Fed started to do the quantitative tightening, uh, while sometimes market refers that to the uh, reducing the balance sheet or shrinking off the balance sheet, that's the different story, uh, which is likely to be take place in the May this year. And when they start doing the quantitative tightening, it means that they are going to start uh, pulling back the liquidity that has been existed into the market, i.e. they will start going to sell their bond that has been previously purchased and pull back the liquidity. That's a two different concepts that you have to be aware of. So now, let's move on to talk about the Fed balance sheet. And what does this balance sheet can tell us? Uh, simply speaking, when you see the number is going up, when you see the number is getting higher, it means that the Fed has been providing more and more liquidity into the market by buying more and more bonds. And when you see the opposite, when you see the numbers is getting slower and getting smaller, it means that the Fed is start getting pulling back the liquidity from the market, i.e. Uh, they are start, start si selling the bond uh, to the market and get back the liquidity. So you can see the Fed balance sheet was about four trillion US dollar in early 2022 before the pandemic, and then it increased by uh, three trillion US dollar to seven trillion US dollar in the mid of 2022, which only take about half a year, which is insanely fast. And then it climbed steadily to nine USD dollar, nine trillion USD dollar in 2022. So it almost doubled over the last two years, which tells us that how much liquidity had the Fed been placed in the market. And no wonder you can see that the financial asset is going up, including the equities, the the, the bond or the other currencies, they are all rising because of the extra liquidity. And now let's talk about the inflation rate. The inflation rate in US or even in the European country was kind of low or ultra low uh, after the financial crisis uh, 2008. And, and it had, be, had been kept at a very low level for almost 10 years. And then, as you can see from the chart, uh, the inflation rate in US was about 2% flat before the pandemic. Sometimes it might get uh, higher and sometimes lower, but in average, it's about 2%. But since the quarter one of 2020, it, start, it started to climb up because of the pandemic, because of the shortage of labor, uh, the disruption in the business operation, uh, the, the disruption in the supply chain, or the labor shortage, different sort of issue brought by the pandemic. And then it even started to accelerate it since 2021 and it started to evolve. And when the pandemic is getting more serious and it's getting more, more widespread, you can see that the inflation rate even started to climb to almost 6%, 8% now. And I think some of you might, might be able to recall that Different Fed officials has been trying to reiterate uh, in back then in 2020 and 2021 that the inflation in US or in the globe is just kind of transitionary and it's short term, it won't, it won't going to last. But now looking back, it obviously that it is just a lie. A lie from the Fed trying to buy the time such that they can get more time, get more window period to inject the liquidity into the market to save the economy from recession. But obviously back then they already get sufficient evidence and data that the inflation is going to last. And then we can talk about the CRB commodity index. Uh, commodity price or commodity index is a very useful indicator to monitor. 
because it tells us uh, where the inflation might be coming from or where will the inflation going. Uh, this index consists of 19 commodities like the copper, the corn, cotton, crude oil, gold, uh, heating oils and so forth. And what can it tell us is that you can consider the commodity price is the source for the upstream of the inflation because uh, this will be this commodity will be used for further process uh, for those consumer goods or the industrial goods. So when, when we can see inflation happening, when we are seeing that the commodity index is rising, it simply tells us that the raw material is getting more expensive and accordingly uh, the final product, no matter the consumer goods or the industrial goods, will also be getting more expensive. So it, it would be a very useful indicator for us to keep monitor uh, about the inflation trend. As you can see from the chart, uh, this index has already started climbing from the quarter 1, uh, 2020, which is very consistent uh, from what we have been observed for the inflation trend. And then it started to accelerate further in 2022. So what exactly is Fed thinking about now? Basically, they will have to take consideration and balance on two conflict, but yet also critical agenda or consideration. The first one is that they will have to prevent hyperinflation. As you can see from the previous chart, that the inflation now has already climbed to a level as high as 8%. And we have not yet seen the signal that it starts going to slow down. So they will have to take action fast to to uh, to curb the inflation. So you can see that some of the Fed is already implying to the market that not only they will start to to do the rate hike uh, in this year for about six times, but also sometimes in some uh, rate hike uh, month, they will consider to take a place of uh, adding increasing 50 basis point of interest rate instead of 25%. So you have to be aware of this magnitude or the first step they're going to take. And the second consideration, the second objective that is kind of contrary to the first one is that uh, when they are trying to curb the inflation, when they are trying to prevent the hyperinflation coming, they are also aim to avoid bursting the asset bubble. As you can see, the Fed balance sheet has already doubled, almost doubled, more than double. Uh, to uh, 9 trillion now. The market asset, including the housing, including the commodity, including the equity, including the fixed income, has already placed at the bubble level. So when the measures force is too large, obviously the market will be scared and will be feared. And what will happen? The market will be crashed and the Wall Street interest will be affected. This will be another devastating outcome that the Fed or the market will not want to see. As you may recall uh, from the previous lesson, from the previous experience of the quantitative tightening, the Fed take almost about two years to exit the market and it fails. And now they're trying to do that in less than one year. So what might happen? What would happen? You can imagine. Uh, so to me, uh, on one hand, it's about the question of how fast will the quantitative quantitative easing for to be end. But I think another even more important is or for us or is a good timing for us to start to think about is uh, when will the quantitative easing fight start coming? Because it is very, very likely that the market will not be able to afford this uh, quantitative tightening uh, at this level, at this space. And when the market can no longer uh, afford the price, it might be another time that the Fed will be starting to tap into the market again with quantitative easing five. But let's wait and see. And the yield spread will be another very crucial indicator for us to monitor because uh, it tells us that when the yield spread is getting close to zero or getting to negative, it will be a very strong forecast or indicator that the economy might be heading to the recession from the past studies. What about the interest rate? As you can see from the market consensus uh, from this table, most of the market's participation forecasts are expected that by the end of this year, by the end of the December FOMC meeting, the interest rate will be likely climb to a level of 2% to 2.25% level. 
it will be a very drastic difference comparing to now. So, uh, if you like this episode, please click the like button for me and I'm going to produce something similar to that. Uh, please like the video for me and see you soon. Goodbye.